Thank you very much for tuning in. Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist, back with another video from The Line. This one was put out in October 2023. And we've got a caller who is claiming that he's got evidence that uh, the mind can be outside of the body. And he's offering basically a uh, near-death experience evidence. So you're going to listen to uh, about six minutes of the video. And then at the end, I'm going to make some comments. Okay, sure. So there's been an increase in reports of like near-death experiences. What I find to be compelling evidence for their truth is reported out-of-body experiences where occurring near death, the uh, person uh, basically makes the claim that they were able to perceive things from outside of their body. And these claims can actually be verified. Um, there's been a couple of different studies that have uh, investigated these and have actually found that people that claim out-of-body experiences are able to accurately, sorry, accurately report on their own resuscitation procedures without being um, told by anyone else. And people that report out-of-body experiences are 92% more accurate than people who don't. Okay, so what you said that they are able to accurately report on their own resuscitation practice. Is there anything yes. they can, because that's not an out-of-body experience. That's a, At best, you could say that's still an in-body experience, but the, the microphone's still on is, is one such explanation. Is there anything that actually confirms that they went to the exterior of their body? For example, uh, the age-old test of you could put a card on the ceiling facing away and they are able to read the card. Yeah, so they've been investigating trying to do that. The issue is that the amount of people that have out-of-body experiences is so small that when they actually have like a... So I think they your had answer like a is no, Michael. Study. I, I, I don't think we need all the preamble. I think you're saying no, they've not been able to verify any exterior qualities that aren't relevant to their direct experience or what they could have picked up as people around them are speaking at different levels of consciousness, but they are able not to, in a, but, but they are in able to relay that. Setting. Okay. Right. What out of laboratory setting do you feel is verified to have happened? Cause we're very aware that people have claimed the most ridiculous things in out-of-body experiences that aren't in a laboratory setting. So I assume when you say not in a lab setting, you still think there are examples that have sufficient reason to suspect are true. Otherwise, you wouldn't have said that, right? Yeah, there's a lot of reported experiences well, that reported have been experience... verified by medical staff uh, okay. for their accuracy. Okay, what, give us an example of one such that, that isn't easily explained away by it being a person's personal experience that is exterior to the body? Um, I actually don't have it right in front of me, but there's a few where they claim to like float through the ceiling of the room they're in. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them like claims that they saw a red shoe on the roof of the hospital when their body was still in the operating room. And later um, medical staff sent someone up there to go check and they found a red shoe on the roof, and that's just one. That's amazing. Um, How do we prove that that's happened? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you're right. I can't actually prove that. Yeah, Can anybody happened. prove it? The red shoe story? Correct. Uh, no, I don't think that that's been externally you verified a bummer? by like Michael, do an you have investigator. What a, what a bummer that whenever we have proper test protocols in place and the standards of evidence exactly. are sufficient to warrant a reasonable conclusion, nobody's able to demonstrate this stuff. And yet when we loosen up these standards of evidence and rely on anecdotes and testimony and things like that, um, all of a sudden there's more stories. How would we go about testing and verifying that someone's self-reported near-death experience or out-of-body experience uh, uh, coinciding with near-death is an accurate representation of what they experienced at that time and not a brain 
trying to reconstruct what could likely have happened. Yeah, so there's been a couple of studies that have tried to investigate this, uh, the AWARE studies, and the main problem I see is just that the sample size is really, really small. No, and the sample no, size I'm, out of people I'm, I'm that asking, have, sorry. No, sir, I'm asking not about sample size. You could have a sample of one, and it would be a great start. I'm asking how you can demonstrate that what the person claims to recall about that period of time is actual re a recollection of what they experienced at that time and not the brain after that time injecting a plausible explanation for what they may have experienced in that time. Sure. There are like, um, there have been studies where they have like the cards that you were talking about. That they I'm could asking... See. And how do you tell, let me, I, I just got through giving a lecture explaining when I'm asking about test methodology. So here's a person who, upon resuscitation, says, wow, I was just floating above the head, above, above, above the, uh, floating above the bed watching this. How do you tell whether or not that person is accurately telling what they experienced while they were floating above the bed? Versus if their brain is just inventing a story about that period of time after the fact. How do you tell the difference? Not what, what study there is, not what sample size there is. How could anyone tell the difference between a brain actually experiencing or a person experiencing floating above the bed versus a person inventing the a post hoc inventing the experience of floating above the bed. How do you tell the difference? How to tell they're actually floating above the bed? I do not currently know without having them identify Nobody something knows. that they could only Nobody see from knows. that Nobody knows. That's the point. Yeah. There's no way to tell the difference between someone actually experiencing this at the at the moment versus someone making up the story, consciously or subconsciously, after the fact. There's no way to tell the difference. That's the point. Okay, there we go then. So really, I suppose Matt, well, not I suppose, for certain, Matt really hit the nail on the head there. The problem with all this anecdotal evidence, which really is what it amounts to, is that somebody's being re resuscitated, they're recovering, and at some point they're recollecting a memory of something. What are they recollecting a memory of? Uh, okay, let's say they recollect a memory of floating outside of the body. How do we know that that's not just simply, yeah, the mind, uh, the brain creating that experience? Uh, how can we tell the difference whether it's creating the experience or whether there's really a soul and that it was really floating above the body, that the mind can really leave the body? How can you tell the difference? And Matt really illustrated it really well. He explained it well. And of course you can't, but uh, and to be fair, the caller did admit that. But nevertheless, I didn't quite play the end of the call because at the end of the call, he said, I think we're well on the way to proving this. And that is absolutely unbelievable because everything that he presented in the course of the call was uh, completely challenged and really effectively uh, devalued as any kind of evidence at all. So let me just go over one or two of the things that he claimed. First of all, the famous the legendary red shoe um, anecdote. So supposedly um, a woman was being, or a patient was being re resuscitated. I've, I've read up on this. I've read up on this. I've done the research in the past. So, but from, from what I recall, the red shoe incident is that somebody was re resuscitated and later recalled and said, oh, there's a red shoe on the uh, roof. I saw it, I left my body. I floated out and I saw this red shoe. There's a red shoe on the roof. And according to the story, a member of staff went to check, and went to have a look at the roof and found that there was actually a red shoe out there. Came back and reported it. And this whole thing was written up. And I believe it has, it has appeared in many books on near-death experiences and held up as a shining example that this is proof, finally, that the soul really exists, that it can, the mind can leave the body and go and float off wherever it wants and uh, look at hospital roofs and see red shoes. 
Uh, the only problem is when I actually did a bit more digging on this, and I must admit I did go to a skeptic's website where there was a really good write-up, a skeptical treatment of the whole anecdote. And it had been found that the person that this whole story relies on, in other words, the member of staff that saw this red shoe, in all the sources, the name of that person is not given and nobody can trace that person anywhere. It's unknown where this person is. And that's the one, that is the one witness that could at least corroborate that there's a shoe on the roof. Okay, there may be other explanations. Let's say that we had the name. Let's say we could go and interview this. Let's say it's a nurse. Oh, yes. Um, yes, there was a red shoe. Uh, the patient did say it's a red shoe. I went there. Sure enough, the red shoe is there. Okay, uh, maybe there's another explanation about uh, how that testimony, how, about how that patient knew that there was a red shoe there. Who knows what that explanation is? Maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, while she was waiting for her operation or whatever, maybe she overheard somebody saying, oh, the red, yeah, would you believe it? You know, I was walking in this corridor, I was walking, or a member of staff might have said, oh, by the way, there's a red, well, who knows? I mean, I mean, it's the sort of thing that can't be ruled out. But the fact, the fact remains that in all the sources that have been looked at, at least by this skeptics um, website that I went to, and I've done research as well, the name this person can't be traced with this crucial evidence so i would really discount that it's not really i wouldn't i wouldn't say that's valuable evidence at all okay so he mentioned uh, the aware studies and it's funny because when matt said, when matt said well what evidence have you got and he said okay well uh, there have been a couple of studies there's been the aware studies and and then he didn't say anything else because there haven't really been any other credible kind of uh, studies the AWARE studies are quite unique because they were done with the permission uh, and collaboration of a hospital and they were they used uh, resuscitation facilities. They put the card up on the ceiling and the AWARE study uh, one had 2,000 resuscitations and no, there were no positives. Nothing, nothing remotely interesting came out of that. Uh, one patient said, that you know, she she described the resuscitation procedure. Apparently, repeated some of the phrases that were being said by the doctors, but nothing else. Absolutely nothing. Amazingly, there was an aware two study, and this time Sam Parnia again. They did EEG. They did uh, check the brain uh, for brain activity during resuscitation, and he was excited at the end. He said, "Oh, we found we found a brain activity when we wouldn't expect it." Well, actually, that doesn't really bolster the case for uh, that there's a soul, does it? Because if somebody has, say, three minutes and their heart stopped working, okay, they didn't expect there to be any brain activity. And then the patient's waking up, oh, I saw this light, I saw I felt a warm, fuzzy feeling, and I was thinking about all the people that I love, etc. And actually, maybe that this brain activity they weren't expecting is the person thinking and feeling all these things and having the experience. If there's brain activity, it's not the soul, is it? The whole point of the soul is the soul. The soul doesn't require uh, a brain to sort of uh, do things, so or ha have experiences. Yeah. So his comment at the whole end of that big rigmarole of study was uh, interesting results. More research is needed. Oh well, it's always more. Oh, fair enough. Keep trying, keep trying. And if you get a positive on that card experiment, let us know because it would be really interesting. Okay, so um, yeah, that's about it really. There's nothing else that he offered. He kept saying, you know, it was like there really was evidence out there. Matt said, you know, what has been done to prove? He said, okay, well, yes, all right. Well, there's a couple of studies and blah, blah, blah. And well, what was the result of those? Oh, actually nothing at all. They didn't prove anything. They had some reports, but they weren't confirmed. Oh dear, no evidence at all, um, no ND uh, evidence, no proper, no sort of uh, objective, no proper scientific evidence in the whole ND field. But people keep on talking about it and making money out of it. There are people who are writing books about they've been to heaven and back, uh, making a lot of money out of people's sheer gullibility. Okay, that's enough from me. I'm not impressed with ND. Uh, if you guys knows any, if you guys know anything, any evidence that maybe I should look at, or you want me to look at a particular case, let me know in the comments, and I'll go and look, and maybe report back and make a video. Okay, bye for now.